Hello my soccer universe for a quick Serie A review. We had a full week with Coppa Italia, a makeup match and a Serie A round. The truth is I didn't watch all that much because not that much happened in a way and you know I also had some other games to go. In this video I'm gonna give my new January jersey a first rollout if you would like on the channel. But yeah, what's the big news is, the big news we have a cup final between Atalanta and Juve, which actually means that through the league now eight teams can qualify, meaning Fiorentina currently sitting eighth in a dogfight with uh, Napoli, level 11 points, they can still make it into the Conference League. Of course, Fiorentina can also win the Conference League, but I don't think this means that the Napoli will uh, get in as well, which would be actually be really cool to have nine Italian teams next year in Europe. But I think if Fiorentina win the Conference League, then there's no Italian team in the Conference League like we had not too long ago, uh, I think with Villarreal or something like that, or with Spain. In any case, I might be wrong on this one. But Atalanta reaching this final, is just a cap on a season that is really turning up to a big upset for Atalanta. As I said, they already are in the cup final. They are in the semi-final of the Europa League where they are favorites against um, Marseille for sure. Uh, and they have then a good chance of winning it at all and doing so in an exciting way. They are really hitting the form right on the at the right time. And at the moment, they're still outside of the Champions League spots, uh, but they are very much in control of reaching this fifth spot that Italy now already has. Because Roma, with a game more, have only a point, a two-point cushion. Atalanta will probably win this one, and even if not current form suggests that Atalanta is rolling. Uh, they are actually, and when you see the graphics rolling through, Atalanta are at the moment the third highest rated team. Yes, the win against Liverpool in Europe had a big... Uh, <laughs> contribution to that but still it's kind of remarkable that this team from tiny Bergamo keeps pushing and maybe Gasparini finally gets the title that he will deserve for his long very successful tenure with this club and now they also have an, their own stadium so they could play Champions League in Bergamo which I think is something I actually really would like to see as well despite yes I would like to see Roma in the Champions League as well but you know Roma what you have to do uh, either you're ahead of Atalanta and Atalanta win the Europa League or the other way around and six Italian teams in the Champions League. That would be my ideal scenario. Let me go quickly through the Coppa results. I mean, the return leg between Lazio and Juve uh, was in a way a nail biter. Although the way it looked with Lazio holding in the 40th minute, Tuni lead both goals by Tati Castellanos, who has not really worked out uh, for them. But here he did both assisted by Luis, Luis Alberto. It really seems like Lazio uh, could potentially surmount the big giant Juventus uh, having a 2 nil deficit from the first leg. However, the game was way more even Juve they had their chances uh, and in the end uh, Milik gets a deserved goal. They lose on the night, however they advance to the final, another final for Allegri and Juventus. Then in the uh, the other one, that was a, a whole lot more exciting when I mean, Atalanta came storming out. And let's put it this way, Fiorentina barely had any chances, even if it was 11 versus 11. Cop minus already in the 8th minute scores and Skamaka, brilliant goal, however it's called off for offside. And the barrage of chances kept coming. However, the turning point in the tie came when Milenkovic for a last man uh, was sent off in the 53rd minute. Uh, Belotti has to come off then, Martinez Quarta comes on. But wouldn't you know it, with a man less, with their only real chance, Fiorentina equalized in the 68th minute through Martinez Quarta after Biragi free kick. And you thought this, this might be the knockout for Atalanta. However, then Scamacca comes. They get the Lare with a cross in and Scamacca uh, with a, I, I must say it's a scissor kick, but almost out of standing, very quick, quick reaction. Brilliant goal to make it 2-1 which would send the game to extra time. Uh, and while everyone thought it is going to extra time, then suddenly again, as Gamaka pass through Lukman, it looked like offside. And I have to say, I have seen two little replays, but to me, this looked properly offside, even the first two replays, but it was not. And yes, they have same um, auto, auto, auto automated offset, so I do believe it. And so Lukman scores the winner in the 9, 95th, but not enough with that. Pasalic then adds another one after uh, assist by Lukman. Skamaka and Lukman are probably one of the best attacking duos in Serie A at the moment. And the wealth of offensive talent that Atalanta have is truly frightening. I think they, they are a really great side to watch. 
So if you have an Atalanta game that you want to watch, watch it and now they will probably stink it up because I gave you that recommendation. Then, as I already said, going back to Serie A, we had the make May game that Roma really didn't like that they have to go ahead of the Europa League tie up to Udine to play 15 minutes uh, to finish that, that game. Well, um, they won the game. That's, I think, the biggest one uh, that they actually managed. Match with Cristante with a late head in the 95th minute. Yes, the game was halted in the 83rd minute. Um, wins it for Roma. And that's big news for them because those are three points that they really needed. It's also bad news for Udine under new coach Cannavaro. Because that means they're closer and closer and closer to relegation. And that didn't change over the weekend. Uh, let's put, put it this way. I mean, uh, the probably the biggest result of the weekend, uh, especially if you look at, re uh, at relegation, but overall I would say as well, it's Frosinone's 3-0 win over last place Salernitana. Because that is three points that they probably count coming on, but that now puts Fro Frosinone out of the relegation zone. Still in danger. I mean, there are uh, quite a few teams in there that might get impl impl implicated, but still, big win. Uh, wins you need at this time of the, of, 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 of the season. And Udine, then, even with a 1-1 one -one in Bologna, we'll talk about that when, uh, is now in the relegation zone. Uh, Lecce, safe. That is a remarkable result in itself. Lecce saved with a 1-1 at Monza. Both goals coming in stop Stoppershine. Lecce actually took the lead and then Pessina with a penalty equalized there. But this was a mid-table duel. Uh, Lazio get another win. Sakani uh, scoring the winner over Elas. Elas again. Very, very close to the relegation. This is going down, down, down the wire. Uh, if uh, I keep saying it. If you look at, at this moment now, Lecce, I would say save, although theoretically they still could be caught. But I would call Le Lecce save. But I mean, Cagliari, uh, Empoli, Frosinone, Elas uh, <laughs> are all within one, one point and then two points ahead currently of Udo Udinese. So a real, real dogfight there. Many things can change. The less we say about Juve Milan, that nil-nil draw. Yes, Juve probably had a little bit more of the game. Milan were only out there for a draw. There were no Milan fans there because they were protesting the big pr uh, prices. It was 90 minutes that I would like to have back. That's all I'm gonna say there, and I'm not even mentioning any man man manager talk. Let's have this little bit light on Milan, this video. Um, Inter, 2-0 over Torino, two Chalanoglu goals uh, in early in the second half. And then celebrations, 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 they were great. I think this was uh, Inter were packing all the celebrations that they wanted to have. I mean, they couldn't celebrate the Scudetto uh, that they won a couple of seasons ago uh, because of COVID. Then they um, wanted to celebrate probably the, uh, re reaching a Champions League final, which didn't happen. Or they wanted to, uh, the, the Champions League. I think they put it all in there. The celebrations were massive all over Milan. Personally, you know. I didn't really pay that much attention to them, you know why. Moving on, uh, we've talked about Udine, as I said, they managed a 1-1 in Bologna. Bologna have Europe secured for the first time in 20, 20 years. This is in itself, I mean, Bologna for me, all the Atalantas of Bologna to me is the story of the season in Italy. It is really amazing what Thiago Motta has done. However, that game was not that great. I mean, uh, they went even down, 1-0 uh, down through Pereiro uh, goal. They won one man down, Bukema sent off with a yellow red 64th. However, Salamakas gets an equalizer. It's not the greatest result for Bologna overall. However, it's a result and it gets them closer to a top five finish, which is enough for, for, for Champions League. And Bologna and the Champions League, that's that's a pretty amazing result in itself as well. Uh, Napoli and Roma play other two to draw. That helps exactly no one. Uh, the game came alive. I always thought that Napoli had a little bit more of, of the game. However, Roma took the lead through the ball at, uh, penalty. Then Oliveira scores. That doesn't happen often. And Ozyman with a penalty then gives even Na Napoli the go-ahead uh, go goal. However, in the 89th minute, a Tammy Abraham, yes, after long injury, Tammy Abraham manages to e equalize. As I said, a draw that doesn't really help anyone because Napoli is sitting on level with Fiorentina, uh, having a worse goal difference, and Roma uh, cannot really separate themselves from Atalanta. And speaking of At Atalanta, they get a relatively easy 2-0 win over Empoli. Yes, Empoli is also one of those teams that is down there still. Uh, Passage with penalty and Lukman, uh, but I think they are very much eyeing the Europa League at the moment, which, of course, they have never been further than a semi-final. They could reach a final. And it's realistic that they reach. I, I would definitely favor Atalanta over 
OM at, at the moment, although OM is definitely the bigger club. Let's put it out there as well. Uh, we had Fiorentina 5 1 over Sassuolo. That's enough for goal diff difference to take over uh, Napoli. Uh, putting all their frustrations in them. All their fr fr frustrations. Sotil, Martinez, Cuarta, Gonzalez, Barak, and uh, again, Nigni Gonzalez make it a big, big, big scoreline. And then yesterday in the evening, Genoa 3 0 over Cagliari. Uh, I think if Cagliari would have gotten something out there, there would have been more safety. Now it's still tight. Think of all the teams that are down there. Cagliari probably looks the safest, but this is very, very deceiving. Also, God, 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 God said. And for Genoa, promoted side, Giladino doing a great job, job there. I like the uh, um, Nordic axis. You know, you have Thorsby, you have Frendrup, you have Gudmundsen all scoring. Pretty big stuff. So, that was it in a nutshell from Serie A. On the upcoming weekend, uh, we have Roma Juve. I think that's a pretty big one, uh, especially coming out of the Europa League. Uh, Atalanta will go to Salernitana. That probably might be enough for Atalanta to overtake Roma. We have also big on uh, Monday between Udinese and Nap Napoli. I think those are more or less the stats in our games. And Inter have to go to Sassuolo, the only team that have beaten Inter this season and they get relegated go figure any case let me know what you thought about Serie A uh, this uh, past weekend I said not too much uh, excitement but the relegation battle is actually exciting so we also have to watch out for that one give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video subscribe to my channel if you want to see more talk to you soon bye hey there I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too also please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!